Good morning. Good morning. How's it going? Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Just ready to, just ready to podcast. Okay. I think I think this week is a little more uh, tactical. I yeah. say that, but I always know it's going to veer into something else. Always. It always does. So we're going to talk about keto rules. Yes. Keto rules. Weight I, loss rules. People get people, rules. people get overwhelmed. There's yeah. a lot of information out there. Right? Yeah. So just to kind of like give you a background of how I got the idea for this, because obviously I talk to so many people. Okay. I talk to so between my DMs, my clients in Vibe Club, I talk to people a lot. And one of the questions I got yesterday was, um, Hey, what do you think about quest bars? And I don't really like them. That's my <laughs> <laughs> that, that's my um that's my real what answer you, what to were that they question. Asking, but yeah, and that's what I think what's is interesting. Like what she was asking was like are they okay? And I I think that's like super interesting. Because that's what most people want to know if they're new to keto or more so probably because they hear different opinions from different people. And there are people that specifically come to me based on the way that I kind of teach keto as like, I think they kind of know that it's very rare for me to take a very hard stance of like, no, that is bad. That should not be included on a keto diet because I can't say that. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. I know that a lot of people have had really great results eating very dirty keto, which this is something we didn't even discuss before we started podcasting. Dirty keto, clean keto, lazy keto, whole keto. There, there's like all different ways and everybody seems to be teaching one specific way of like total carbs, net carbs, fasting, six meals a day. I mean, and this is even within the keto community. So you a lot of people are quitting keto or not starting keto because it's very hard for them to get clear information on like, how do I do this without screwing it up? There's a million ways to screw it up, which is why I also frequently get the question, what am I doing wrong? That's the biggest question. And that question is always comes down to weight, staying the same for two days, or I lost 18 pounds and now I'm only losing two pounds a week. And it's like so frustrating, you know, like, so then the question is, what am I doing wrong? And there are so many people that would tell you like, oh, I'll tell you what you're doing wrong. You're eating dairy. You know what I mean? Oh, 100%. It's because of the tortillas. Oh, 100%. It's, be, you know, so it's those rules and it's the contradictory information out there. And so what I want to tell everybody on the podcast, because much more people are going to hear this podcast than the one person that I had this conversation with, is that I said it totally depends. I have kind of gone back and forth in my weight loss journey of whether or not I include those things. And at the end of the day, the only thing that matters when it comes to these diet rules, these keto rules is like, are you getting what you want or not? That's going to look different for everybody. Are you get, If your goal is weight loss, which is what it is for most people, mm -hmm. most, most people, and I'm going to make this sweeping judgment, are not looking to go from the standard American diet to clean keto, whole keto, unprocessed keto, super clean. What they're trying to do is make an incremental shift into a healthier lifestyle. They're trying to like feel a little better, eat a little better, even more so than what they want to start doing, what they want to stop doing. I want to stop eating so many chips. I want to stop eating fast food three times a day. I want to stop doing this and I want to slowly improve my health. But then they get bogged down by the do's and don'ts of doing keto right. Yeah. And so what I explained to her was that I do not like Quest Bars. There is another brand of bars that I've been eating lately that I've been really enjoying. I'm not putting too much in because I could focus on the fact that like you could be eating cleaner. The, this is just a bunch of garbage chemicals because that's what you hear about those prepackaged things. Yeah. Um, so I just basically asked like, are you feeling good? Are you losing weight? Are, are they helpful for your meals? Are they satiating? I asked the follow-up questions, which is just in me as a coach, like, are you getting what you want? Okay. 
then there's no problem. You know what I mean? And I just find that this spans much further than just like, hey, what do you think about these bars? Because what she was asking for is like, are these okay for keto? That's yeah. the question. Is this okay on keto? Is this okay for keto? All the time. And it's just like, then you have the people that are like, keto is a is a metabolic state. Something isn't keto or is keto. It, it doesn't is or is. And then someone will fight you on that and they will be like, absolutely, something is keto and something isn't keto. And one of my favorite sayings I heard at some point in my keto lifestyle was anything is keto if you slice it thin enough. Because mm. <laughs> it's like, you could have a piece of cake and if you slice it thin enough that it's only one gram of carbs... It totally depends on how you define keto. It totally depends on how you keto, how your keto lifestyle looks. What was that? Our dog. We dog. should not have the door open. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I, th I think I tend to agree with that. As, if there's any rule, it's just carbs. Total the carbs. Ketosis will be created by the absence of carbs. And even more people are confused about like, oh, do I need more fat? And it's like, no, eating more fat won't put you into ketosis. Eating more fat won't help your weight loss journey. Ketosis comes from not having excess carbs. That's it. That's all. So when it comes down to what's okay to eat and what's not okay to eat, I know that this may overcomplicate it for, for some people, which is just like, there isn't a list of good or bad, okay and not okay foods unless you were asking a specific person who has a specific mode of doing keto. Yeah. If you're new to keto, experiment and test your ketones with a blood meter. Yeah. And if you're new and it's not even, that's assuming that your big goal is like ketosis or yeah. deep ketosis when really I want to take it down to the base, right? You want to lose weight. Yeah. with keto. I'm going to assume that's what you want. That's what you're here for. That's why you're listening to this podcast. You may be further on in your journey where now you're cleaning things up, whatever, because th that was part of my process as well. But I'm going to assume you want to lose weight. Can I have these protein bars that are keto friendly? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Can. can I eat these low carb tortillas instead of the normal tortillas? Absolutely. Like, it's I'm going to make a sweeping statement here. Okay. Usually people are asking these questions because they want to know the rules. They want to know if they're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and that may become, that may come from a beginner's mindset. That may come from somebody who's like, this isn't working. So I need to figure out what's, what I'm doing wrong. I'm going to make a sweeping statement here. I think nine times out of 10, if it's not working for you, AKA you're not getting the results you want, AKA you're not losing weight. You're eating too much food. Yeah. Would you agree? Yes, because I didn't know I had so many feelings about this topic. It's very common for people to be like, it's the sweetener stalling me. It's probably the food. <laughs> it's probably the food. You know, like, the food. I think it's the, the keto bread. Yeah. And it's like, it could be. I'm not saying that it's not. I'm just saying, why don't we start with volume of food before we start demonizing certain food? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's going to be my guess first is like, because I did have points when I, my first round of keto that I did before I got pregnant again, where I really literally, you guys, like if it was keto, I ate it. Like throughout my day, there was no game plan. There was no meals planned. It was when I got hungry, I put keto food in my mouth, whether that was at work and it was nuts and cheese, some turkey roll-ups, I'd get home, eat some food, eat a snack, eat a bar, eat some chips, eat, di eat dinner, eat the treat. Eat I ate whatever I wanted as long as it was keto. And there were times when my weight did stall out. It was not because I was eating keto products keto-friendly products. At the end of the day, you want to be eating a healthy diet. You probably want to be getting there one step at a time. But especially if you're new to keto, if you're just starting out, even if you're within your first six months, you're doing a good job, even if you're eating a lot of keto substitutes. Yeah. Because it is a switch and you get to, that's kind of like, what's so important to me when I'm teaching my clients is like, you get to decide when something has served you long enough. And if you are someone who used to eat eight times a day, and now you're like, I'm going to have this keto friendly protein bar. It does not have the cleanest ingredients. It may have a funky sweetener or two or diet soda. Like you have these things in your life where you're like, I probably shouldn't be eating this, but it's better than what I was eating before. 
And I know other people would argue with me and would be like, no, it's all garbage. I don't care. I'm just going to tell you the way. I'm not going to consider everyone's opinions to what I'm saying right now. I'm just going to give you my opinion, which is just like, you're on the right track. You're moving in the right direction. And that's what I care about for you. How this looks six months, two years, four years into your journey, it's going to keep changing. And you will get to a point where you're like, all right, I don't think I need that mid-morning protein bar anymore trying to reduce how many of those I'm eating a, a month. I feel like they kind of do something funky to my stomach. It's like, I think I'm good with that. And then we get rid of that. And then maybe we're having one once a week instead of every single day. It's always it's always consistent improvement. And that improvement doesn't have to look like growing 100% every day. It, it looks like 1% better every day. And you just slowly getting your brain used to making better choices than what it was making before. I mean, think about it. You're not eating sugar anymore. That alone is a huge like milestone. Yeah. You should be stoked that you're not eating sugar But it's anymore. aspartame now. <laughs> you know what I yeah, mean? It's yeah. like, and I get that. But you're not just drinking sugar anymore. You're not just having regular Dr. Pepper where you're pouring sugar into your body. Now you're drinking diet. Yes, there may be some concerns with the sweetener used in diet soda. It's debatable though, dude. It is debatable. But that's the thing. All of this is debatable. And most people don't feel like they have the strength to debate things they know nothing about. And so... And some people aren't even trying to get healthier. They're literally just trying to lose weight. So everyone's at a different point. And so I'm trying to be clear in what I'm trying to say, which is that any step in the right direction is a good step. Any step in in the direction of what you want is good. Any replacement that takes something that you knew was really bad and was making you overweight and was making your brain light up with, you know, all those happy chemicals that you were eating too much of, any shift that you're doing that's like, this is better than that. This is better than that. This is better than that slowly over time, I think is the best way to do it. It's that you've even talked before about like, if this is really hard for you, how about you slow down on the reduction of your carbs? How about you don't go from 600 a day to 20 a day, but you go from 600 to 400, 400 to, you know, it's the problem is, is that people want fast results Mm -hmm. and they go too extreme and make things too difficult on themselves. If you're starting, if you want to transition to keto, you absolutely could taper yourself down to 20 net carbs a day over the span of two months. But yep. people don't want to do that. They don't want to waste time. They want to waste time. Like, who the hell cares? <laughs> time. What's the race? I want to suffer for a shorter amount of time rather than enjoy a longer amount Imagine of time. Imagine this. Imagine you're currently not doing keto. You're eating 200 grams of carbs a day. Imagine you bring it down to 150 for two weeks. And then the next two weeks, you bring it down to 100. And then two weeks after that, you bring it down to 50. And two weeks after that, you bring it down to 20. Yeah. What about that? Yeah. Or you're just like slowly just like, I'm not going to have normal bread with my sandwich today. That's all I'm going to change. Yeah. I know that I'm getting rid of 40 grams of carbs just by that. Like that, you're going to have a better time. (laughs) You know? There's no rush, guys. There's really no rush. No, you just want to like speed up. If especially if you're setting yourself up for not making it sustainable to where you're like, okay, I'm going to cut down super. I'm going to implement all these things at once. And then I hate this process. I think keto sucks. I am miserable. Do you know how, how much less likely you are to stick with it than if you had just been like, okay, what's, what's a couple good changes I can focus on that are doable for me right now that are moving me toward ketosis, that are moving me toward keto, that are moving me toward low carb. And I'm sorry, but if a quest bar is helpful for you, whether it's because you're still balancing your hunger hormones. You're still, or whether you need something sweet and like you just really enjoy these. Like let's not demonize someone who's trying to be better, even if that means that instead of their normal donut and coffee, they're going to have a Quest Bar and coffee. Yeah, Like congrats, dude, standing ovation for you making that change toward better health. Isn't it crazy how it's a a regular coffee and donut versus a Quest Bar and maybe a different type of coffee? How many, the difference in calories it could potentially be? Yeah, and sugar. It, it could be instead of 800 calories, 300. Yeah. Just by changing a few things. Yeah. How is that not better? Yeah. And I think it's funny that we're using the word Quest Bar when I, I do not like Quest Bars. Oh, yeah. And they're just, we're just advertising just question, for them. <laughs> the question you got. No, I have too. I just think it's funny. But yeah, it's those tiny little swaps that, again, I can't say it enough. It's the tiny things that make a big difference. And instead, someone has a Quest Bar, 
there I said it again. And then they see someone who has a big following on Instagram say, those protein bars are garbage. They are trash. They are loaded with chemicals. They are terrible for you. Just eat real food. And this person is like, dude, I can't even barely swap out my breakfast. And you're telling me that what I'm doing is terrible for me. Okay, well, if it's terrible either way, I'm just having a donut. That's the problem with, with Instagram is someone starts keto and then they find all the, these keto accounts. They yeah. follow all of them <laughs> and they're all shouting Different with their megaphone. Stuff. And yeah. then you're like, what the fuck do I do? How do you know? Because a lot of the time it's directly contradicting something yeah. else. And then people come to me for advice. I'm like, do you like it? <laughs> <laughs> Are you losing weight? <laughs> do you feel good? Are you happy? Okay, yeah. then keep it up with your quest bar until you're like, until you have good reasons for getting rid of it. I don't, I'm not here to provide you with good reasons. You were not stupid. We know what's good for us. We know that drinking soda three times a day, diet or not, is not good for us. I was talking to someone the other day about the Pep Pepsi her Dr. Pepper Zero fiasco, which a lot of you wanted to argue with me that this is like, that it's anything other than diet Dr. Pepper, but they have rebranded to be called Dr. Pepper Zero. And someone was like, regardless, whether this is or isn't, yeah. I know that drinking soda isn't good for me. No one was ever confused about that. And it's like, yeah, same thing. You're drinking soda is not great for you. You don't need someone to tell you that. You get to look at your diet as a whole and be like, you know what? The diet soda is not ideal, but because I went to one diet soda a day from three regular sodas, I know I'm moving in the right direction. Yeah. That's it. No one's confused. No one is like, drink three sodas a day for good health. And now I'm drinking one diet soda a day. Do that for as long as you want until you decide and you feel I'm in a place where I know confidently and I, I feel good about cutting out that diet soda finally. And if that takes a year, two, three years of drinking that yeah. one diet soda a day, you're moving in the right direction. Because yeah, you will hear people in face. I'm in a lot of weird like keto Facebook groups and people will, is this keto? Oh my gosh. I, I'm realizing how big of an issue this is. Is this keto? They'll post in the group and everyone will attack. And then you'll have someone who will be like, yeah, I lost 200 pounds and I had <laughs> Coke Zero every single day. Yeah. I I lost 200 pounds. I had two pieces of that zero carb bread every single day. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, stop and stop worrying about what, go, what goes into other people's mouths. Like, I get it. People do stuff like lose weight or get healthy and they have a way that they did it and they feel strongly about it and they want to share that with people. I want you guys to always remember that's just them sharing their experience. That's what they recommend. That's what they see as the best case. But a lot of the time you can't go from where you are to the best case. You need to know how to make changes and decide when it's time to make another change. Yeah. That's why it's so important that you I'm always talking about your reasons. Your reason for having a diet soda once a day could be very, a very, very, very good reason because it's something different. And then you may get to a point where you're like, I am drinking soda more than I want to. From now on, I get one diet soda a week. Yeah. And that's just because your reason has changed. It doesn't matter what Dr. So-and-so says about diet soda. Diet soda, you know how the one they try to get you off of heavy drugs, they'll get you onto a drug that's... Yeah not as addicting or not as yep. damaging. And they're just like, we're just going to try and wean you off to mm -hmm. get you into a better place. Same thing. That's the way your health journey can be. That's the way keto protein bars can be. That's the way keto protein shakes can be. Those things that just help you, they're a bridge to somewhere else or they're just part of your lifestyle. It's the same way other people are like, you can have cereal. It's the same thing. We use tools that help us get where we want to go. And kind of where we all want to go is similar but very different. We're all kind of headed in the right direction, but we all have a little bit of a different path to get there. And so beware of hard and fast rules where someone says, tells you yes, yeah. no. Yeah. I think everything is debatable. Yeah, 100%. Uh, there was more I wanted to get into <laughs> about rules and stuff, and we'll have to tackle it in a different in a different podcast that gets a little bit more into the reasons. But I feel like, this is important the where the focus went yeah because like every kind of tool you get to decide if you use it or not don't let other people and i and i get that that's hard but stay in your own lane and 
you check in with yourself of why you're using something or why you're eating something or why something is part of your daily plan and protocol and use it as long as it's helpful and then trust yourself enough to know when it's time to let that tool or what's like comfort thing go when it's time to be like, okay, we're done with this. We've reduced it. It's not useful. It's not helpful. It's not necessary. And whatever reason you decide is good enough. And that's it. All right. All right. See you guys next week. Yeah.